Hey, good afternoon, Patrick. Hey, everyone. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Anjali. Thanks for having me. Really excited to be here. Of course. Absolutely. Um, so quick introductions. I know you just heard from Anjali and from myself, so no need to get yeah. into that. Um, but we have Patrick McDowell here. He is one of the senior security solutions architects at AWS. Patrick, would you like to you know, provide any more information about your background there? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Real quick. Uh, my name is Pat McDowell. Uh, I've been focused uh, on security for the last 15 years of my career. Uh, the last seven, I've been fortunate enough to be at AWS. So I've seen the business really right. grow. And uh, being based in New York, uh, I've helped a lot of uh, customers in the financial industry uh, move from being mm -hmm. afraid of the cloud to embracing it for security reasons. Yeah, very, very important part of the journey. Completely. Yeah. Um, so with that, same here goes. If you have any questions, please put it in the Q&A. Um, we'll get to them if we can. Um, and, you know, to start off, Patrick, you know, I think you said said it, you know, just recently, right? You know, the speed and innovation of cloud computing can be really scary and it can be really scary, especially for security teams. How does yeah. AWS allow end users to stay secure when utilizing, you know, AWS services? Yeah, one, one of my favorite questions to talk about, uh, basically because I used to be on a security team. I was the, you know, the begrudgingly crotchety firewall guy that didn't want to make changes, right? It would take weeks to get a firewall change in and all the developers hated you. That was me, uh, you know, but I, I saw the light and now I'm an optimistic security guy in the cloud, right? Uh, so you used to have to make a decision between moving fast and staying secure, right? Yeah. It's not uh, an or thing anymore. You can now move fast and stay secure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the great powers is the cloud is you, it gives developers, anyone, the ability to uh, invent, right? Uh, so maybe on the weekend, you have this cool idea and you're like, oh, I wish I had, you know, uh, server, like hardware servers that I could build things on, just test it out. But my boss is never going to sign a PO for thousands of dollars just for me to test a small little idea. Yep. Uh, but with the cloud, you can now do this. You come in the office on Monday morning and for pennies on the dollar, you could test out your new idea. And yep. maybe something stems from that, right? Um, so you don't want to, uh, you know, stifle innovation by having these, these overarching, uh, you know, uh, iron-fisted security rules with, like the grumpy firewall guy, right? So yeah. that's when things like guardrails come into play, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're going to let you have fun, but these are the things that cannot happen. You can experiment, uh, and that, that's where things uh, come into play. Not only that, you know, uh, in traditional data centers and IT environments, a lot of companies don't know what's there. They don't update their CMDB. There's always that one server that's plugged in underneath a desk. No one's, everyone's afraid to unplug it. But in an API-driven environment, you can, you know, uh, in AWS terms, describe all EC2 instances and get a list of everything that actually exists in your account. There's not going to be that hidden mystery server. Uh, you're going to know it exists, um, as an example. And all of that uh, kind of feeds into a service that we have, uh, AWS CloudTrail, where every action you take in the, in the cloud is recorded. You know, mm -hmm. you used to not know if someone unplugged that network cable or did something wrong, but literally everything you do in the cloud is recorded there for visibility, which is a huge boon for security teams, right? That the yeah. visibility never really, uh, you know, it existed before. Yeah. Um, and, and, and another thing is, you know, with the speed, you know, yes, your developers have speed, but your security teams have speed now, too. Um, you know, automation is huge. Um, our, our chief uh, information security officer, Stephen Schmidt, and, and, and I forget the exact numbers off the top of my head. His team gets something like hundreds of thousands of security tickets cut every day. Um, these are from our automatic detections, and they can be they can be very small things, but something like over 99% of them are closed automatically via automation remediation. And there's no need to get um, your, your your hard to come by security geeks involved, um, you know, that, and that's how security grows. We have to ex, uh, expand our security teams via automation, whether that's via using, uh, you know, uh, you know, things in AWS in our API-driven environment or products like SOAR platforms, you need to be able to um, automate in order to scale security teams these days. Yeah, I mean, those are some really, really great points you highlighted there, Pat. Um, you know, that's one of the, the great things about being in a cloud environment that not only can you spin up environments in pennies, start your testing, but ensure that you have the guardrails around it so you're teams that are testing it out, that they stay within their limits. But if they don't, you know, those guardrails can help you um, get back on track and at least and, and, and force 
those security practices, whether if it's through automation or just you know um, going through different checks that AWS might provide. Uh, but uh, just to go back to one of the points you had uh, said earlier about um, you know uh, tracking of all the activity that might be happening in AWS, you know, are there anything that you could recommend? Um, or from your point of view, like the auditing capabilities within AWS, like how do you ensure that, you know, if I'm going through my life cycle of development, I'm, a, I'm implementing my, my business logic, I've been here for many years now in AWS, but if I have to go through an audit, how do I make sure that that can also help me stay secure um, in my environment? So any thoughts around there? Uh, any thoughts of if I'm going through an audit, how do I present that evidence that I'm actually secure? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so we uh, you know, help make that easy in some ways. I think uh, a lot of people are familiar with the shared responsibility model. There's some yeah. things AWS does, there's some things the customers have to do to yeah. be truly secure. Uh, the, the first part is easy. We have our audit reports available to customers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all the protections that AWS is doing for us, and this is what we're doing. So I'll focus on that later half of what customers can do. And yeah. you know, um, since everything is available for customers via an API or something called AWS Config, which mm -hmm. tracks not only uh, what are your current resources, but have those changed over times, you can literally hand your auditor, hey, um, this is the life cycle of this security group rule or this EC2 instance. And on this date, six years ago, this one change was made and here's the record. That is yeah. something, it's almost like uh, Git, but for cloud infrastructure, mm -hmm. the, the things that were changed and present that to your auditor. And yeah. that, uh, you know, and that's literally a one click on ability in, in your account. So uh, that, that makes, uh, you know, audits are, are never pleasant, but this, this helps, uh, uh, you know, uh, ease the pain a bit. Exactly. Yeah. Easing the pain is always something you want to do with audits. No offense if there's any auditors on here, but completely agreed. <laughs> um, we have one question from the Q&A that came in, um, and it was around, you know, do you have any or many enterprise customers who deploy a cloud perimeter, a, you know, a gateway to their multi-cloud account landing zone just using AWS native services like Shield Advanced, uh, you know, WAF, uh, Route 53, security groups, you know, without any third party products is the question we got from um, someone in the audience. Absolutely. And this is actually going to take some of the wind out of my sails for later. I would hope. <laughs> uh, but I, I will hint on it real fast. So, um, yeah. yeah um, you know, we've uh, expanded our, our network and centralization capabilities tremendously over the years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there is now a product called the Transit Gateway, which is how can I kind of connect on a network level all my VPCs and separate uh, network isolation zones together to have that central point of control. Um, yeah. So, so that is possible. I'm going to save some, uh, you know, some morsels for, for later in this talk, not to sidetrack too much, but I'll I'll dive into that some more as well. Great. Thank you. So, um, you know, kind of diving into that. So, uh, you know, what are some of the security and compliance checks that you um, think are integral to cloud security? You know, whether if it's tying in all the AWS services that might be or, you know, uh, support that AWS config might might provide. And then uh, closing out with that, you know, what does AWS do really well in regards to helping implement these safeguards? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, there, there's lots of security checks, but I think the canonical example is, do you have an S3 open bucket, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, that's kind of uh, stemmed a lot of the um, posture management tools like Divi Cloud. Um, yeah. So yes, um, you want to know if you have an S3 open bucket, and sometimes that's okay. So so one thing we've done in that regard is we made it, you know, by default, S3 buckets are not public, right? You have to work mm -hmm. really hard now to make them public. But not only that, we have, um, if, if we think about like prevent and detect in security terms, we have detective controls around that, such as uh, I am access analyzer, mm -hmm. uh, which can actually parse these bucket policies and I am policies to tell you if this is open in the world. You know, um, when you see a wild, uh, you know, these policies are powerful and complex. Um, and there's lots of conditional statements in there. And like, I think this is open, but it's not much. So now when you go in the S3 console, there'll be a bright little badge that says this is open or not. And then you mm -hmm. have to jump groups to open it. But not only wow. that, we have a team called the Automated Reasoning Group. Uh, there's a team of applied scientists and PhDs. Uh, they, they, have, they use math I cannot possibly comprehend myself. <laughs> Formal methods yeah. actually automatically parse these uh, policies because when they get complex, regular expressions just doesn't work. 
So yeah. this is something that bubbles up and we have a whole team of, you know, applying the this this mathematics. So it's not even just like a regular measure of mathematics to prove uh, that that something is uh, secure or properly configured. Another thing I also like is, you know, uh, encryption is very important to customers in the cloud. They want to know that their data is safe. And our, uh, you know, thought is uh, make encrypting all the things as easy as possible. So when you launch an EC2 instance, you know, you click a, a checkbox, a encrypt. But maybe mm -hmm. you want a more organizational wide thing with a service control policy that makes all the things encrypted, right? So those are the, the two big checks I think resonates most of the customers because it gets uh, you know most most of the buzz, the, the S3 open buckets, uh, and let's make sure everything in the cloud is encrypted. And encrypting in, in, uh, in the on-premises world, non-cloud world was really hard, and now it's yeah. really easy in the cloud, right? Um, yeah. There's a lot more security checks. I, uh, I, probably can't even count as many as the security checks that Divi has uh, on their product. Yeah. But, those are, but those are the two things uh, that, that helps, right? Um, a couple other things, like if I could wave my mag a magic wand and make customers do two things in AWS when they first set up their accounts, uh, but besides the things we talked about was one, to turn on AWS CloudTrail, and two, mm -hmm. to turn on Amazon Guard Duty, which is our threat detection uh, yeah. AI based uh, a tool that can let you know if like there's unusual behavior both at the cloud infrastructure level like what are my users doing as they configure and but also at the, at the network layer what's this odd traffic um, those yeah. are the few things I wish I could you know wave a magic wand and get all customers to do uh, and not only that you know moving down the uh, you know the the uh, maturation process of customers, you know, move to that infrastructure as code model. Don't just go click things, but, you know, deploy your infrastructure in a cloud native way via using AWS CloudFormation or Terraform. So, you know, you have code that's actually, you you know what your uh, infrastructure is supposed to be like. Yeah. And, yeah. And that, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, and real quick, you know, outside of that, we, ha we have some white papers called the Well Architected Framework. Mm -hmm. CIS yeah. benchmarks, you know, that's great to read and digest, but having those tools built in the console or automated guardrails is really what's going to uh, get most of developers' attention uh, when they're building in the cloud. Yeah, yeah, and then you know you you uh, shared some really good thoughts there around the two services that you recommend that everybody should enable. Um, you know, from our customer base, uh, one of the things that we are seeing is that, especially when you talk about CloudTrail. Definitely, absolutely, 100% agree. Not only does it track everything that you're doing in the cloud, but also keeping that audit trail that we had talked about earlier. But um, but what, but if you were to factor in cost here, you know, are there? Do you have any recommendations around what are some of the things um, that customers can can factor in if cloud is is a concern? Or I'm sorry, if cost is a concern in managing their services across the the two services you 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 suggested. Yeah, so uh, the, the good thing about both of these is that yeah. uh, they're, they're very low cost. Um, yeah. with, with, with CloudTrail specifically, um, it's log files are stored in S3, which you can mm -hmm. then uh, do to archival storage, which is less than a penny a gigabyte, right? Yeah. Um, there really is absolutely no reason that you can't keep these CloudTrail logs for years or decades now, yeah. fractions of uh, a penny a, of gigabyte, right? Yeah. Um, continue that with guard duty, we actually, um, you know, design guard duty, uh, you know, it's one click on, there's nothing that goes through, there's nothing to set up and to be less than 1% of, of your AWS bill. We don't want cost uh, to be a, a, mm -hmm. a pivoting factor when it comes to uh, the, the basics of the security needs. Yeah, no, a great point. So I know that something that we you know we're talking about new or exciting features and your reinvents coming up. So I'm sure there's a lot of ones that you're gonna you know keep close to your chest, Patrick. But are there any really cool. new or exciting security features that AWS, AWS has recently announced or are coming soon that can help you know bolster your security uh, security posture here? Yeah, I'm really happy to announce that there's some things hot off the presses of the last night and the few weeks. We are now in the pre reinvent stages, so. Yeah. Um, yeah new announces this week and next week, and then uh, even more when reInvent hits. Uh, but last night we launched uh, what is called the AWS Network Firewall. Um, and this is actually goes to that uh, first Q&A thing we had. Oh, if there's a, you know, a, a central services VPC in the landing zone, mm -hmm. how can I do this kind of tools? Well, now in your, uh, you're gonna have an a, a AWS managed network firewall. It's stateful and stateless inspection, and it has uh, IPS IDS capabilities. And one of the most amazing, you're like, oh, well, that's been around for a long time. 
uh, you know, yeah. uh, PS capabilities. What's great about this is um, firewalls used to be uh, a, a, a scary word in the cloud because networks in clouds don't work like they have on premises. An example, uh, there's no multicast, there's no um, yeah. um, <laughs> virtual IPs and MAC addresses. And that's how firewalls traditionally handled high availability, right? Yeah. Um, this new network firewall, which is built on another service we launched called Gateway Load Balancer, um, mm -hmm. uses a new type of load balancer, a new type of network protocol called Geneve, where these uh, you can now auto scale firewalls, right? Auto scaling firewalls used to be difficult because they're basically state uh, stateful in memory databases, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. hard to uh, you know have have those uh, you know uh, sessions sticky and and fail over. Mm -hmm. Now that's possible. So this one uh, AWS network firewall can now scan. Uh, scale horizontally out with you. Uh, it won't be a bottleneck. It won't cause, a, a, it won't break, it won't be a, an outage because it's it's highly available. Uh, and those are capabilities that never existed until last night for customers. So to that first Q&A answer, you can now have that AWS network firewall um, part of your, uh, you know, your your landing zone, uh, central uh, uh, VPC along the transit gateway to have that uh, scale, scaling out capability for your network traffic. Another, yeah. small, another small launch about two weeks ago is uh, our Nitro Enclaves. You can think about this as general usage, uh, confidential computing. It's completely isolated um, compute and memory, no persistent storage, no internet access. Uh, it has a secure channel to your EC2 instance. So you think about use cases there, uh, high, highly sensitive use cases like calculating uh, your, your certificate private key and things mm -hmm. like that. That makes sense uh, as well. Fantastic. You know, quick question from the audience, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, it looks that it looks like you know someone's curious about how this new firewall that just was announced last night. How does that differ from Firewall Manager? So this integrates with Firewall Manager. So think about Firewall Manager as the way to uh, orchestrate all your web application firewalls or now network firewalls or security groups across all your database accounts. So you can use Firewall Manager to now manage a, a network firewall, uh, like the name, like the name indicates. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, that firewall didn't exist before then, so um, it works in conjunction with it. Fantastic, thank you. We had another question come in as well. Um, you know, a little bit more broad, but you know, with these new features and with all of the other guardrails you mentioned, Patrick, you know, how do you convince you know you being the customer um, that you know your leadership that data is more secure in the cloud versus on prem? Is it utilizing some of these new features? Is it kind of the overall architecture to AWS? You know, yeah. what, are, what are some of your thoughts there? Yeah, so one thing I, I do like to say is that security is familiar, right? So mm -hmm. uh, firewall is a familiar security device, uh, which used to use an on-premises world, which is a little tricky until last night to use in, in, in the cloud world. So uh, if we're using the same tools we had on-premises, uh, you, you can say, hey, we're using all our favorite security tools still. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, we have this edit visibility. Uh, we're now encrypting everything, which we've never done before. Uh, we're making all these things so easy and we're actually getting more uh, efficiency from our security team because they're able to do more. Not only yeah. that, uh, not to go back to the, the audit black hole, look at <laughs> like our, our infrastructure is under audit constantly. We have so yeah. many different audit regimes or things with like, uh, there's probably auditors in our environment every single day, all day, and we welcome that. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I'll turn it back to you, Anjali, thanks. Yeah, um, so uh, in regards to uh, the new service, um, the great thing that you talked about is the auto scaling capability. I mean, I think that's gonna be a unique and a very amazing uh, feature, uh, just a, a differentiator for you guys. Um, so in regards to just overall management of it, um, would you say that it's, you know, the, the learning curve for customers to pick up on it? Are there any gotchas that you could share around implementing this feature? Is there anything um, net new that our end users will have to kind of focus on? Anything, a learning curve will they have to kind of go over for them to start using it? Any thoughts there? Yeah, fortunately, I've heard a lot more applause and happiness than complaints in, in the few hours. Um, yeah. There are a, a couple of things, like it needs to live in its own network subnet. So you have to make okay. sure you have um, IP yep. address allocation for that subnet so it can auto scale out. It needs to yep. live alone there. Um, that, that's the one gotcha I can think of in my head. It's not too much of a gotcha. It just requires uh, some planning for the most part. Got it. Okay. No, that's good. I'm we have a few more questions that are coming in too from the yeah. audience. Um, someone says, AWS is marketing security groups as similar to a bunch of firewalls in your environment. 
why do we need this new firewall, which sounds like an on-premise appliance? Yeah, that, that, that's a, a great question. Uh, you don't need it. It's an it's an option, right? Um, um, there's, a, there, there's a couple things uh, why you would want to use it. Well, it's really going to help with your URL-based uh, a DNS or URL whitelisting. Like, I just want to allow, uh, you know, Amazon.com or uh, API.AmazonAWS.com and, and nothing else. So you can block on the URLs. Um, it's also going to, uh, since it's using a Suricata Snort engine, you can do uh, deep packet inspection. So that's kind of mm -hmm. the, the add on feature there. Fantastic. And not only that, um, you know, when, when you're, in a cloud native DevOps world, you have all these teams, microservices, they're kind of using their own security groups. And maybe the security team, central security team, doesn't quite trust them to get them right. With this, you can think about another layer. Hey, we're going to control the single ingress point for network traffic. So it matters a little bit less if developer team A, B, and C mess up their security groups a bit. So it kind of uh, gives a nice balance so uh, DevOps teams can move fast with mm -hmm. speed as well as security having that control, which really goes back to our first point. You can move fast and stay secure now, and this only adds to that story. Fantastic, thank you. Great. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, as, you, uh, every, as you're aware, everybody's aware, um, we've gone through a new era here in 2020 with new different work dynamics and working from home. Um, you know, do you see any emerging security challenges that uh, companies need to be aware of? And, you know, how has AWS been kind of navigating through the world of everybody's home, everybody's working remote? Security is definitely a heightened concern now for many enterprises. So what are some of the things um, that you see yeah, that, uh, that I, others need to be aware of? Yeah, you know, I'll speak in some generalities here. Yeah. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, you, everyone sees a report, there's an uptick in phishing campaigns, right? Yeah. Or you see news about a vaccine, click here to get on the vaccine list, right? Um, yeah. It's very, very enticing. Yeah. Uh, but with that comes the rise of ransomware, right? Um, and a lot of people typically think of ransomware as, oh, that's only going to affect my MacBook, my end users. But, you know, um, that, that's not really in a uh, cloud or, or data center phenomenon. That, that's actually untrue. Uh, yeah. You know, the phishing attack maybe go to your, 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 um, your end users, but you still need protections in place to make sure that doesn't bleed sideways, so to say. So yeah. what does that mean? Well, first of all, think about, you know, this comes back to network segmentation, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure your user environment is segmented from your, um, uh, your, you know, your AWS and cloud environment. That's a best practice, right? Uh, you can think about immutable infrastructure, uh, so containers or maybe not being uh, or how you patch and you don't want to SSH into your EC2 hosts if you don't need to. Yeah. Uh, think about immutable infrastructure. Uh, and not only that, uh, back to the, the uh, network segmentation uh, and, and security groups, right? Um, yeah. By, by default, uh, there is semi-network segmentation in AWS because every single virtual instance you launch has to have a network firewall security group around it. Mm -hmm. So if you have those locked down properly, the, the way that ransomware works, and I'm no expert in the malware category, but some of them spread via like say, services like SMB and things yeah. like that. If you're only allowing um, you know, certain protocols or very nice, tight grips, uh, tight, tightly knit security groups, uh, the, 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 the concern of that, there, there's a you know, of growing is is not as strong as it is. And these are just native controls. These aren't add-ons with security groups. So, um, you know, the same concepts of security apply during this time. Uh, you just have to, you know, uh, have that segmentation in place, really. And then you can think about cloud native approaches and how that kind of, uh, I don't want to say nullifies it, but reduces the, the, the threat surface of, of things like this. Yeah, no, that's that's a really good point. Absolutely, I think um, the ephemer the uh, ephemeral concept of you know whether if you're working with containers or working in um, that that space of just overall management of your workloads, but uh, you know the segmentation piece is equally important. Not just even in an on-prem environment, but not only are you staying secure within your pod of of, of work efforts, but also yeah, the fact that it, it's it was already there with AWS, um, it's just making sure you just have heightened security around it and double, triple checking, um, make sure that your network rules across security groups, you know, NACLs, everything else is secure. So that's good to hear um, about, you know, AWS is already on top of it, but it just, you know, the different heightened concerns that are happening. Uh, that's that's the that's the worst part, you know, being in, we're already in a tough time and the fact that companies have to be, cognizant of things like this. It's just, it's not easy. So 
Agreed. And, and we have a few kind of comments coming in as well. Yeah. Um, you know, the first one I see is from Evelyn. Um, and Evelyn's asking about kind of Divi Cloud and what we do in terms of, you know, working with AWS. You know, Evelyn, mm -hmm. uh, we want to just keep, keep the rest of the session focused on Patrick and, you know, his time here. Um, so someone will reach out to you in terms of helping answer those questions later. Just wanted to let you know that we saw it. Um, I saw, you know, a few other ones come in, you know, one specifically, you know, relating to the changing work dynamics, but really kind of just in general, you know, things yeah. that AWS can do, Patrick. Um, but, you know, what else can AWS do to help customers deal better with bot traffic? Um, the current WAF version two falls short in comparison to other products in the market. It would be great to have a, an, a tightly integrated product that is actually able to meet the changing bot landscape, landscape kind of just the overall theme of more AI wherever you can you can have it. Do you have any comments to that, Patrick, or any thoughts there? Yeah, yeah. so one of the reasons I'm here uh, speaking uh, at yeah. this uh, summit today is one of our key differentiators in AWS is our partner network, right? Mm -hmm. and, and our partners, right? So that's where we see our, our partners feel that. Like we have the largest ecosystem of security partners and all partners of the major cloud providers. So there are companies out there um, that have great bot detection things and we've partnered with them. So if you have advanced capabilities uh, you, you need, um, mm -hmm. we would like to, you know, have that better together Reese's peanut butter cup chocolate mm -hmm. peanut butter story uh, yeah. with, with our partners in AWS, because that's really where customers are going to get the, the most overall value. It's a combination of cloud native services and partners coming together to have that true security story. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, we do a lot, but we can't do everything. And there's expertise in the world we, we do not have uh, mm -hmm. and that's where our partners like Divi Cloud come in. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I know we're getting close to time, but I think we have one more question that we've prepared that you know, we can go through quickly um, before one o'clock. All right. And so, you know, with that, I think you really teed us up well that for that, Patrick, right? So yeah. what do you recommend to third party vendors like Divi Cloud or, you know, like these other partners you talked about with your, your large ecosystem there? Um, what do you recommend to maintain and extend the security posture of AWS services? Yeah. So, you know, AWS listens to our customers. Our roadmap comes from customers. We build mm -hmm. cool things like building blocks, though. Um, so uh, when uh, our partners like Divi absorb the outputs or use our building blocks to build a more, uh, you know, complete customer vision of service, that's really where the, the partner ecosystem, uh, you know, excels. An example, you know, uh, you know, AWS focuses on AWS cloud. We do not focus on multi-cloud, and that's where Divi yeah. can we have great tools I talk about, like AWS Network Firewall um, and, and, and Guard Duty. Uh, but traditionally there is, you know, you have these security alerts um, and they, uh, you know, they just build up, they build up. There's no automations or remediations. One of the most powerful things about Divi that where it helps our joint customers is all the remediations that are built into it. Mm -hmm. So when uh, a, a third party like Divi or a partner of ours can absorb all the great work. I said, like we did that uh, applied scientist team and put that into their tools and then make that easy to consume for customers to make that complete story. Uh, that is uh, my recommendation and build on top of those uh, building blocks uh, that we present. Fantastic. Agreed. Saying the services that you all have built has been really exciting and a great thing and something that we look forward to doing. I know we're excited for reInvent to see what else you all have out there. So, you know, we're looking forward to that. I'm sure everyone else on the call is as well. Um, I know this wraps up our time here, Patrick. So I wanted to say thank you and thank you to Anjali, you know, for the discussion here. Really fantastic. And thank you for all the questions yeah. you did as well. Um, really enjoyed having you on here today, Patrick. Um, and with that, I think we're going to transition to our next session. Great. Thank you. This time thank flew you, was really fun. So. Yeah. <laughs> it really did. Thanks again, Pat. All right. Great.